Hello there and welcome to video number 175. This one is the first in the Pythagoras and trigonometry section and it is on Pythagoras. Uh, most of the videos in this section are quite uh, difficult mathematical skills. Uh, most of them are higher level but this one is foundation um, as well. So the keywords I've got for you are Pythagoras, square root and hypotenuse. Now Pythagoras is the uh, branch of mathematics that allows us to work out um, side lengths missing side lengths in right angled triangles as long as we've got two side lengths um, the square root is uh, when you undo a squared number um, that's how you undo a squared number it's the opposite things the inverse operation of squaring and the hypotenuse is what we call the longest side of a right angle triangle and that longest side is always across from the right angle directly across from the right angle opposite the right angle okay uh, now, in the star, I've got what Pythagoras' theorem actually is, okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. To find the missing side in a right angle triangle, or a rat, as you could call one, um, label the sides a, b, and c, making sure c is labelled as the longest side. Write out the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the theorem itself, substitute the numbers into the formula, calculate, and then don't forget to square root your answer, okay? Um, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this, uh, a long way safe way and a way of understanding it and then a quick way okay so uh and this i've shown you a few different pythagoras questions in other contexts so this is the one where i'm going to explain it a little bit more now you can only use pythagoras like i mentioned in right angle triangles if you've got two side lengths and you may need to rearrange the formula in order to find a shorter side okay and i'm just going to quickly show you what it is where it comes from really so um this is a little right angle triangle that i'm drawing here Okay, this is the longest side. Now the square, the area of this square here that I'm shading in, right? Imagine that's a square, all those side lengths are the same. I know they don't look it. Okay, the area of that square is the same as if we were to get the area of this square, one of the shorter sides uh, squared, uh, length squared, and then add it to this other shorter side length squared. If you add those two areas together, you get this area, right? And that's where Pythagoras' theorem comes from, okay? not necessary really for you to understand that in great detail but it does help a little bit now question number one ask us to find the length of the missing side give your answer to one decimal place this is as simple as it gets as basic as, as pythagoras can be okay so question a we've got five centimeters six centimeters and then we've got this long side over here now this is obviously clearly the right angle normally it'd be labeled as well this must therefore then be the length c label the longest side c doesn't matter if you do either of these a or b it doesn't matter which one's which i'm going to call that one a and i'm going to call that one b now i'm going to write out a squared plus b squared equals c squared there's my theorem okay i know that looks like a a nine it's not a nine it's an a okay let's get rid of that and write that and make it look like an a it still doesn't look like an a there you go a squared plus b equals c squared now uh five is a so five squared plus six squared equals c squared right 5 squared plus 6 squared, you don't even have to work out what those things are, right? You just type them into the calculator. That's 25, though, and that's uh, 36. So 25 plus 36 is 61, all right? So we get 61 is equal to c squared, right? Now, to undo that, to, that's the area of the square, all right? The length, um, length, length times the length, okay? You square root it. So we get the square root of 61 is equal to c. Now, if you want to work out what the square root of 61 is, you press square root 61 and you get the square root of 61. And then you get the decimal answer. And that's what we want because we want it to one decimal place. So x equals, and I forgot what that said already, 7.8. And that would be in centimeters because everything else is in centimeters. All right. So a relatively simple process. Now, it can get even easier. All right. You can always do this. If you're finding the longest side, you can always press the square root button straight away do 5 squared plus 6 squared, right? And then press equals, and you get the square root of 61 straight away, and then you press S to D, and you get 7.8 again, all right? Now, we can do this again with the shorter side. Uh, so I'll just get rid of that. And that's what question B is, right? We're finding a shorter side here. So let's have a little go at this one. Label the sides. That one's C, because there's our right angle directly across from it. This one's A or B. Let's call that one B, and let's call this one A right now this time we need to rearrange the formula slightly and we're going to start off with a uh, equals or a squared equals so a squared equals um now it does matter which way round you put this right 
because if you put this one first, then you'd end up getting a negative answer and you can't get negative lengths. So we're going to put this one first, right? So it's going to be C squared minus B squared. Just rearranged it, all right? And uh, if you don't know how to rearrange things, then watch my rearranging uh, formulas video. And basically substitute the numbers in. So A squared equals 15 squared minus 4 squared. A, A squared equals whatever that gives us. 15 squared 225 minus 4 squared which is 16 and we get 209 so 209 now a equals the square root of 209 don't forget the square root your answer and uh, let's find out what that is so square root answer equals 14.5 to one decimal place x equals 14.5 centimeters to one dp all right like i said the most simple versions, basic versions of these Pythagoras type questions you are going to get. But very fundamental. You definitely need to know how to. I mean, you would have seen if you watched the rest of my videos, how many times I've used this already in other questions. Right now, question number two, A asks us to calculate the height of a triangle, giving answer to three significant figures. Now, the height is this distance here from the apex of the or the top point of the um, triangle to the base right now that's going to cut the triangle in half the base is now cut in half right so we've got two nine centimeter lengths here okay this is our longest side right and you hopefully can see now we've got a right angle triangle you could ignore half of it right we've got a right angle triangle that is 17 centimeters and nine centimeters in length and then we want to work out what this is so this is going to be c this is going to be b and this is going to be a okay and that's Pythagoras in action we're working something out for a purpose um, and let's do that calculation so that's just again going to be working out short side a squared equals let's do it the quick way and just do a equals and then put the square root of uh, 17 squared minus 9 squared a equals and we'll get the height that way so I just press square root button 17 squared minus 9 squared equals 4 root 13 4 root 13 all that means is 4 multiplied by whatever root 13 is okay so press s to d 14.42 okay we could round that to three significant figures i think it's asked us to do if i just move the calculator out of the way we'll be able to see uh what it did say three significant figures so one two three that two does nothing to that four so 14.4 all right so the height um, which has no let's just say that h equals 14.4 centimeters wasn't labeled with anything so i called it h now find the area of the triangle easy peasy now because we know what that is okay we don't have to round anything on the calculator all you got to do is half the base times by the height well you know the height you know it's 14.4 and some more decimal numbers after that the base is 18 centimeters so half that that's nine times by the answer so all you got to type into the calculator so 9 multiplied by answer equals all right there's our area simple as that 36 root 13 or 129 points let's round to um, three significant figures again because that's what it asks us to do in the first question so 100 and that 7 is going to round that 9 up to a 0 and then that's going to become a 3 so 130 point and then everything else becomes zeros. So 130 centimeters squared, because the area is always measured in square units. All right, cool. Right, some other uses of Pythagoras then are in question number three. 3a asks us to calculate the distance between the pair of coordinates, this coordinate and this coordinate. Now we could do a quick little sketch, all right, where well, everything's positive here, so we just need the positive quadrant of our coordinate grid 6 2 let's go across there and up there that's about 6 2 and then 11 6 so let's say it's about there and about there right so what we've got is the distance between these two points that's what we're interested in all right so uh we could label them right because i said that's two and that's six and then that's 11 and that's six right basically we want to find the length the distance okay and that because this is a coordinate grid, right, we end up getting a right angle triangle here. Okay, so if I was to draw that point there to that point there, okay, we could work out this distance here because we can see the differences between six and two. And that's four units. Okay, and this distance here 
It's five units. All right. So we're able now to work out that distance there. All right. So it's just using Pythagoras, but it's knowing that you can use Pythagoras to do this. That's the key. So this is a very simple question. Um, let's work out the, uh, let's call that one C. So C equals the square root of, do it the quick way, um, four squared plus five squared. So C equals, um, type it in, root 41, all right? So square root of 41, or, and we could say 6.4. Uh, units 6.4 units we don't know what those units are all right there's not specified in the question so we'll just call them units 6.4 units all right there you go um, and that's rounded to one decimal place that's the most accurate answer root 41 okay and then in question B I've got a contextual example so an aeroplane is flying from Southampton to Paris and the aeroplane flies 60 miles east and then 990 miles uh, south how far is the plane from Southampton directly? So here's, let's say here's Southampton. Okay, and we're gonna go 60 miles east. So that's directly this way. Okay, that's east direction. If you don't know your compass directions, you've got north, east, south, and west. Never eat shredded wheat is how I've always remembered it. Um, and then, yeah, you go across 60 miles. So we've got 60 across here. All right, and then we're gonna go from there, we're gonna go 190 miles down to Paris. So 190. And there's Paris, right? It's not to scale or anything. Uh, so directly, again, we're looking for this this distance here. Okay, and what we've got, what we've created for ourselves is a right angled triangle with some numbers. All right, and we can use those numbers to work out this direct distance between Paris and Southampton, Southampton and Paris. I don't know if it's anywhere near, near real or not. I haven't looked it up. So uh, again, it's just label it C, A and B. Okay, C, uh, let's just do it a quick way again. All right, C equals square root of, hope you understand the quick way. If you don't, uh, let me know. And uh, I'll remake the video, the whole thing. I won't, um, just learn it. So the quick way, square root of 60 squared plus 190 squared, C equals. Ten root three hundred ninety-seven, in more in like in real terms. Uh, I think it would be better to give our answer. So that distance is. Uh, it's going to be the units of miles. Let's round it to one hundred ninety-nine point two five. That would be a good degree of accuracy. So one hundred ninety-nine point two five miles. Because it didn't specify in the question. I didn't write that in there. Um, I do leave it off for some questions. It doesn't really uh, matter because that is what they do in exam papers. Sometimes you have to decide um, what you're going to round it to. But there you go. There's there's Pythagoras in action. Lots of different types of question there. Um, and I've used it in, in a number of different contexts as well in other questions. So hope I hope you understand it now. I hope it all makes sense. Uh, I hope you can apply it yourself to the questions that you have to apply it to. Um, whenever you see right angle triangles, just think Pythagoras. It's more than likely going to be a Pythagoras question if you see right angles in it. Or um, if there, it could be a hidden question like that one there, B, on question three. And A, I suppose, as well, is a bit of a hidden thing because you're not sure whether you can use Pythagoras or not. It's like, how do you go about doing it? Well, now you know, all right? Uh, if you watched it, and if you did watch it, then you'd be listening to this bit. So, of course, you watched it, unless you fast forwarded it to this bit which would be weird. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves. Look after one another. Uh, please make sure you continue to watch the rest of the videos and learn the things that you need to learn. All right. Ta-da.